Hi, it's Nisha Nicholas. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about fetal circulation and how it's different from what you will find in the adult human. All right, so we want to begin by talking about the modifications that are in the fetal heart. And before we name these I, and look at where they're located, I'd like for you to think about why there would be anything different about the fetal heart as compared to the adult heart. Now, remember when we're talking about circulation, there are two main parts of circulation. You have the pulmonary circulation that is responsible for taking that deoxygenated blood out to the lungs and dropping off CO2 and picking up oxygen, bringing it back to the left side of the heart into the systemic circulation, and then that oxygenated blood is pumped from the left side of the heart out through the aorta and out to the body to drop off that oxygen. So why would that need to be different in a developing fetus? Well, I'm sure you've all figured out already it's because that developing fetus is going to be in the uterus and is not utilizing the lungs to bring oxygen in. So where is that fetus going to receive the oxygen? Why does it need oxygen? Yeah, you knew that already. It's going to need oxygen because regardless whether or not that fetus is breathing oxygen in, you've still got to have oxygen to take out to body cells in order to make enough ATP. Now remember in the nine months that that fetus is in the uterus, all body systems, all body structures have to develop. So in order to do that, the metabolic rate is going to be very high. A lot of things going on, a lot of changes occurring, a lot of growth occurring. So there needs to be sufficient oxygen supply getting out to those fetal cells. So let's look at how all that happens and the modifications that are responsible for that. If you look here on the uh, right side of this drawing or the right side of this slide, you've got what appears at first glance to be a normal heart. But notice you've got a placenta down here that makes things a little bit different. Okay, now remember what that placenta is there for. It's the connection between mother and baby. The placenta is going to be responsible for taking nutrients and oxygen from mom's blood and getting it out to baby. Now there are other things that are going to be transported in that blood as well, but for the purpose of this discussion, let's focus on that oxygen. So we've got the placenta here. Now, this is not the correct placement of the placenta because there's no uterus in this diagram. We're just putting it here simply to indicate that the placenta is a part of this circulation. Okay, so the placenta is going to connect from mom's blood supply back into the baby, right? So this is going to be the fetal heart. All right, so the placenta brings in oxygen from mom's blood and it flows into the inferior vena cava. Now, if you'll notice here, you've got some colored arrows and some arrows that are not colored. In this particular drawing, the clear or unshaded arrows indicate deoxygenated blood, blood that is not carrying oxygen, and the darker ones indicate oxygenated blood. Okay, so you've got oxygenated blood coming from the placenta and deoxygenated blood coming from the body into the vena cava. Now, this is the fetal body, remember? So this deoxygenated blood has been out to body tissues, dropped off that oxygen. All right, so it's coming back into the right side of the heart. Well, this blood from the placenta, oxygenated blood, remember, is coming back in through the inferior vena cava as well, back into the right atrium also. All right, but a couple of things are going to be different about the pathway of blood flow through the heart, and those are those two fetal modifications. We've got the foramen ovale, indicated here by the FO, which is a hole between the right atrium and the left atrium. Okay, so when that blood comes back from the inferior vena cava, remember some of it is oxygenated from the placenta, that blood is going to flow through the foramen ovale out to the left side into the left atrium. Some of that blood will pass through 
the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Then it's going to go through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk to the left and right pulmonary arteries and out to the lungs. Now, why are we taking blood out to the lungs to begin with if we're not going out there to drop off CO2 and pick up oxygen? Remember, that's what we do in the adult lungs. We have that gas exchange. Well, even though we're not doing gas exchange in the fetal lungs, those tissues are still developing, so those cells out there still need oxygen. So we've got to take that oxygenated blood out to the lungs so those tissues can develop. All right, so the foramen ovale is that first modification that is between the right atrium and the left atrium that shunts blood from the right side into the left side. Now remember, the left circulatory system in the fetus and in the adult is responsible for pumping blood out to the body. All right, so the left side is going to get oxygenated blood back from the lungs through the left and right pulmonary veins back into the left atrium through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle through the aortic valve into the aorta and going out to all parts of the body. All right, so that blood coming from the left ventricle is oxygenated. Remember, it just came back from the lungs. Going up into the aorta, but if you notice here, you've got something a little bit different. That is the second modification, and that is the ductus arteriosus. So it connects the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. All right, now remember, anything that's in that aorta is going out to the body. So when we go back over here and think about that right side again, the right side of the heart, remember some of that oxygenated blood, some of that deoxygenated blood as well, had gone into the right ventricle, then into the pulmonary artery, out to the left and right pulmonary arteries, and out to the lungs. Well, some of it is going to be pushed up into the aorta through the ductus arteriosus. Remember, the whole purpose of these two modifications is to prevent excessive blood flow out to the lungs and to get that oxygenated blood out to the body. All right, so far so good, right? All right, so let's talk about what happens when things don't go as they should. Now, in the normal fetal heart, you've got these two modifications responsible for making sure that adequately oxygenated blood gets all throughout the body with a small amount of that blood, just as with the rest of the body tissues, going out to the lungs to make sure that we've got oxygen for development, for maintenance. So under normal, con uh, excuse me, under normal conditions, shortly after birth, these two holes are not going to be needed anymore. Why would it change? Of course you knew the answer to that. I don't even have to wait for you to think about it, right? The lungs are going to start to take in oxygen. Okay, so once born, those pulmonary alveoli in that baby's lungs are going to expand. They're going to open up when that first breath is taken in. The pressure in the lungs and the heart is going to change. Baroreceptors in the aorta, in the carotid arteries, and in the medulla oblongata. Where is it at? Yeah, in the brain. These baroreceptors are going to detect changes in pressure, okay? And as they do so, then the respiratory and circulatory centers in the brain, in the pons and the medulla oblongata, are going to take over and cause the respirations and the circulation to change and to become more like it should be, okay? More like it is supposed to be in the adult body. All right, so those changes in pressure in the heart are also going to lead to those two openings closing. Okay, so under normal conditions, the foramen ovale is going to become the fossa ovalis. Okay, so it's a piece of connective tissue that is between the two atria. It's closed off, so it prevents blood flow. All right? prevents flow from the right atrium into the left atrium. Because remember, the pattern of blood flow has got to change once we begin to breathe oxygen. Okay, now, the second thing that's going to happen is the ductus arteriosus 
becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. Now you'll notice when you look at the models uh, in lab between the atria, I'm sorry, between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries, you'll see there's a little strip of sort of yellowish looking connective tissue. That's the remnants of that ductus arteriosus. So that is the ligamentum arteriosum. All right, so what happens? Suppose things don't happen as they should and those changes in pressure don't result in closure of these openings. Well, if you have uh, that condition where the openings remain open, it's known as patent. Okay, so patent foramen ovale means that the foramen ovale did not close. This happens in approximately one out of every four births. But as long as it's a very small opening that remains open, not closed, uh, then it's usually not going to be a problem because you're still going to have adequate blood flow into the right side and into the left side, so in the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Now the cause for this is, is usually unknown, but it is uh, the most common of the atrial septal defects. What does septal mean? This word should look familiar. S-E-P-T-A-L comes from septum. Remember, septum is the divider. So you've got a septum between, a wall dividing between the atria. So this is the most common of those atrial septal defects. Now, um, as I said, this is usually not going to cause a problem and no symptoms will develop as a result of this unless there are other complications um, along with this patent foramen ovale. Now, let's talk about the other aspect of this, the patent ductus arteriosus. This is typically more common in female infants than in males more common in premature babies who are also more likely, of course, to have respiratory distress. And also it's uh, commonly found in children that are born with Down syndrome as well. Um, so this one tends to be more complicated and cause a lot more problems. The patent ductus arteriosus um, is different because remember, it's between the two main arteries, the pulmonary trunk, and the aorta, the two main arteries that carry blood away from the heart. But the difference is that aorta is carrying oxygenated blood and that pulmonary trunk is carrying deoxygenated blood. So you're going to have a mix of that blood and perhaps insufficient oxygen getting out to body tissues, which could result in several things. You've got uh, respiratory problems that could develop. Uh, this infant is typically going to be very lethargic or have very little energy. You may also see poor growth because not sufficient oxygen is getting out to body tissues. Now typically the first course of treatment with this is to give medication to try to induce the PDA to close on its own, especially if it's a smaller PDA. Uh, if that doesn't work, however, surgery can be the next option. Uh, the surgery now typically is much less than it was back many years ago where just a small incision is made between the ribs. Uh, then the physician can go in, the surgeon can go in and repair that opening so that it does restore normal blood flow. Um, since I've started learning about this, I realize now what the surgery was that my mother had. I remember even from childhood just wondering what happened with this large incision or large scar that she had that ran under her left breast all the way around to the middle of her back. And it was probably three quarters of an inch thick, so it was a very massive scar. And she told me that she was born with a hole in her heart. Well, of course, now that I know a little bit more about patent ductus arteriosus, I have realized that that is probably the condition that my mother was born with and had to have it surgically uh, corrected. Alrighty, so um, that is basically what you need to know about the fetal heart and the differences in the fetal heart and fetal circulation as compared to the adult. Uh, check with your instructor and they will let you know if you need to go further into this discussion, but that's it for me. Have a good day.